receive a word from the Lord. Come on, amen. Luke, the second chapter. Luke, the second chapter. Uh, it's good to see all of us here today. Uh, we are just allowing God to rain on us in this season. Uh, I prayed fervently this morning that these next 12 or so days before this month ends, that he would rain on your families like never before. How many are still believe that there's rain that's still getting ready to pour out on your family? Amen. Luke, the second chapter, I'm going to begin reading at verse 8. It says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Here it is, verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. And this shall be a sign unto you. And this shall be a what? Come on sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel of a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest peace on honor, peace, goodwill toward men. When you look at your neighbor and ask them this question this morning, I'm taking my verse from verse 12, my message from verse 12 where it says, and you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothing. You'll find the gift. You'll find the gift of God. What? Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Will you ask your neighbor, are you gift wrapped? Come on, ask them that. Oh, all right, get, some, get somebody else. They don't, they, 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 they're not catch. Just ask them, are you gift wrapped? Is your life gift? wrapped. Thank your Holy Spirit for your presence. Minister through these lips of clay in Jesus' name. You may be seated just a moment. I won't be before you real long. There will be many gifts received in this season. How many have already got your gifts ready to give away? Many gifts will be given away this season. And many of us will receive them with joy. For gifts are given, listen to this, to bring joy to the heart of the recipient. Is that right? In fact, the word gift actually means charisma. It means to bring joys, where we get the word even the Holy Spirit. However, there is an aspect of a, the gift that always has to be considered, and that is the wrapping of that gift. How that gift will be wrapped. Now, you learn that when you get married. Come on, brothers, help me out. <laughs> you know, you give, I mean, you give gifts away, you, you think you've really done something, but if it's not done with thought. Come on, are you listening to me? If it's not prepared, it's almost like you didn't give the gift at all. Can I get some help, brothers? Help me out just a little bit. It's the truth. It is true. <laughs> the reason the wrapping is so significant because there's a notion that it reflects one's preparation, the thought, the care of the gift. So while you are giving away your gifts this year, please consider how you present it. Please consider how you present. I'm trying to teach even our leadership here and the people I mentor and even my own children every day that presentation is important for, recitative, for people to receive what you're doing. How you present something means everything. How we present dream life will determine how people will come back or will not come back. Can you say amen? So let's look at what the rap gift brings. The purpose of the rap gift, of course, is to protect and to shield the gift from the environmental elements that surround it. That's why we give a gift. The proper way to wrap a gift is to cover every exposed area before its value can be really appreciated. The reason why you cover every exposed area is to protect it for the element of surprise. You don't want people to see any part of that gift before you give it. Do you have it? The power of the wrapped gift is when it is unwrapped, it is given at the time when it's most needed at the recipient. How many of you thank God for some real timely gifts in your life? Come on, amen. They come just at the right time, at the right place. Well, watch this. 
that night when the shepherds appeared, the Bible says, when the angels appeared unto those shepherds that were in the field, the angels wanted, can you turn the lights on? Because I don't want nobody to fall asleep on me. I'm feeling, I, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's just, it's just, it's just people getting, I just, all right, I'm, all right. <laughs> I just picked that up in the spirit. They're going to sleep on you. Keep your lights still. <laughs> The angel said, you will find, watch this, we're giving you a sign. And signs are significant. Write that word down, significant. Signs point you to a meaningful thing. We're giving you a sign. What kind of sign will it be? Will it be? Well, you will find the babe wrapped. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. You will find the gift of God. How many know that Christ is the greatest gift that you and I could ever have? Come on. I mean, you may have, you might get a car, you might get a home, you might get some perfume, you might even get some toys if your children, you might get some gadgets, but there is no greater gift you can have in this season when you recognize it than the gift of Jesus Christ. Come on. Is there somebody here that was with me this morning? God's gift to the world had to be wrapped. The child had to be wrapped. Because he was just a baby. And swaddling clothes are significant. And why would that be a sign? It would be a sign because swaddling clothes are like linen cloths. But they weren't any kind of linen cloths. They were linen cloths for the wealthy. That was the whole significance of it. Uh, typically in those days and times, babies didn't have diapers. So they were really worn around naked. So when they told the shepherds that this babe was going to have, be wrapped in swaddling clothes, they knew right away that wealth and royalty was associated with this. But that wasn't the paradox. The paradox was you would find him wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. Royalty in a manger. Glory to God. Divinity with humanity. Heaven on earth. Glory in a human vessel. Uh, he's trying to show us that no matter how great you are, you still ain't nothing but a humble servant to God. Are you listening to me? So he's showing us the humility of God, the importance of gift. I want you to see this because this Greek word is important. God will wrap his gift to protect the gift before he allows it to get pre this exposed to eternal forces. And it's okay for God to take the gifts. And there are gifts in you and I that he has given. He's given us, first of all, the gift of Christ. But there are tremendous gifts that are in you. And when Christ came, and when the Holy Spirit came in your life, he came with all these gifts. But God wraps the gifts before he releases them. We see he's wrapped this gift, this baby, in a manger. He wrapped the baby. Because God will wrap the gift so that your immature character would not destroy the gift before it's time. Swaddling clothes, the purpose for swaddling clothes, number one, is to restrain the movement of the baby. Because God does not want you doing things that does not want his gifts to be handled in immaturity. Look at somebody and tell them in 2017, come on, tell them that. You have got to grow up in Christ. Sometimes we feel restrained. We say, God, I got this gift. I'm anointed. I got this ministry. I got this vision. And why are you restricting my movement? Because you're still a baby in that area. Because you haven't grown up. Second reason why the swallowing clothes is to keep the baby silent or quiet. Really? Yes. How do you keep a baby quiet? Because you're not ready to talk yet. You weren't ready to say anything yet. So we, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. And so sometimes God will keep your gift, your voice, quietly wrapped. But I, hear, I have good news for you. Every gift that is wrapped must one day be unwrapped. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
God, sometimes we want God to do things before we're ready, but the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Good meaning that he will not release a gift that's not going to be a blessing to somebody. If God's going to give you this, he gave you your gift to be a blessing to other people. But then he says these gifts that come from God are also perfect, which means the right time. Which means when God brings a gift in your life, he's not just considering it whether or not it's good for you. He's also considering the timing of that gift. And that's why he's not giving you that man yet because he's considering the timing of the gift. He has not given you that woman yet because he's considering the timing of the, oh, y'all. And say, but the good news is, is that you can say this morning, I'm wrapped. There's something in me. Now, that's why the Bible says that in the fullness of time, God sent his son, made of a woman, under the law, hallelujah, to redeem those who are under the law, that we may receive one day the adoption of sons. Listen to me. God has deposited in you a gift, a gift in you, watch this, that he's been preparing, that he has been wrapping you up. He has kept you from going certain places. He has, well, he has kept your voice silent when you know you could have spoken up. Everything that God has deposited in you has been on a timer. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Everything, he never wastes any deposit in our lives. Any gift. And it, listen, can I just talk to those of you that are saved? If you don't see yourself valuable, please see yourself valuable today. Because you are one of the few that God has chosen. That he's put his gift, his gift of Christ, his gift of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but just the fact that God stopped to love me. Just the fact that he considered me above my family members. Some of you are the only ones saved in your household. It's just the fact that God snatched me from my work environment. I'm not the only one saved in my department. Just the fact that God would choose you. Is that enough to give him praise? Is that enough to bring joy to your life? I got good news this morning. I heard the Holy Spirit say, the gift was wrapped. But it cannot stay wrapped. Whatever God has deposited in you, the gift, I'm here to tell you that in 2017, he told me he's unwrapping the gift. Some of y'all got to hear me. God said, I'm going to unwrap every heavenly gift that's in you to be presented to the world and to serve the world. Here's what he said to me. He said, son, tell them that the sign of the gift is for significance. Significance. 2017 will be a year of significance for you. It is no longer just success, but it is significant. You will cross from success to significance. In other words, whatever God has put in you, God said in 2017, I'm going to unwrap it. Oh, glory to God. That's why you had to be wrapped as long as you did because you weren't ready. Because you still had some attitudes. You still had some people in your life that God had to remove. But he told me to tell you that in 2017, he's about to unwrap everything that he's deposited in you. And he's going to use you to touch the world. Did I just have about 10 people that would say, Pastor, say, Lord, unwrap me. Use every gift, everything in me, everything you deposited. I'm ready to tell the world that you are the Savior. I'm ready to tell every mountain that you are the Christ. Listen, look at somebody and tell them it's going to be your unwrapping time. Somebody shout hallelujah. What is he going to unwrap? <laughs> and look at somebody and ask them, are you gift wrapped? Tell them, are you gift wrapped? Tell him, has God wrapped you? Now, here's the other reason why he had to wrap the gift. It's because in that wrapped gift was a king. You didn't know that there was a king inside of you. They looked at you insignificant, 
but there's a king inside of you. There's greatness inside of you. There's royalty inside of you. And God says, this is the year I'm going to unwrap everything. The thing, all, everything, the gifts, the talents, the anointings, the ministry, the glory of God is about to invade your family. It's about to invade your household. It's about to invade your finances. I don't have many believers, but there's somebody that would say, Pastor Ken, I felt wrapped all year long. I wanted to go some places, but it would stop. I wanted some doors to open, but they were blocked. But I'm here to tell you, God God has had you wrapped and aren't you glad that he wraps you in the arms of his love that's why he wrapped you to protect you aren't you glad he's protected you he wrapped you when that car drove by and hit the other car he wrapped you when somebody got sick in your family he wrapped you when they were talking about you and persecuting you aren't you glad he just knows how to wrap the gift somebody say thank Thank you, Lord. Watch this. I'm closing with this. In that gift wrapped is love everlasting. Come on, look at somebody. Tell them you got love in you. Come on, tell them that. Come on. Come on, you got Christ. I got love everlasting. That means what's in you will not fail. Anybody know you have love everlasting? Anybody want to give up on yourself and even God wouldn't give up on you? Okay, okay. I, I, anybody didn't want to get up in the morning sometimes and you felt like just throwing in the towel, but God wouldn't let you stay where you were? That's called love everlasting. That's called unfailing love. Look at this. Wrapped in that gift is joy unspeakable. I'm going to got joy this morning. You know you got joy because you would have quit a long time ago. You would have cut somebody out a long time ago. But God gave you joy. You've gone through some hell this year. You've gone through some tests. But God gave you joy. Look at somebody and tell them, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Listen, I don't know what you're going through today, but you can be reminded by the birth of Christ to count it all joy. That whatever God has started in your life, he's about to end it in a bundle of joy. Can I get about 50 people that would say, I ain't got to let the devil take my joy from me. Come on, get somebody and tell them, this joy that I have, come on. Come on, tell them this joy that I have. Come on, tell them the world didn't give it. And tell them the world didn't give it. My company didn't give it. My boss didn't give it, my family didn't get it, and the world can't take it away. Now give somebody a high five and tell them, don't you lose your joy. Come on, tell them, don't you lose your joy. Wrapped in that gift is peace like a river. Look at somebody said, I got peace like a river. Don't let anybody rob you of peace. Don't let the bills rob you of peace. Don't let the people in your family rob you of peace. Hold on to your peace. Wrapped in that gift is overcoming victory. Is there anybody here that says, I've overcome some things, and I am an overcomer? Come on, get out your seat. I'm almost done. I want you to preach to somebody and tell them you are an overcomer. Tell them overcoming victory is wrapped up in you. Come on, get somebody else and tell them overcoming victory. In other words, tell them there's a winner. There's a winner inside of you. You are undefeated just because of Jesus. Somebody shout yes. There is eternal salvation. There is amazing grace. It is all wrapped up in your life. There is great mercy. There is abundant life. There is divine healing. There is good health. There is excellency of power. There is prosperity and wealth. All that you ever need is wrapped up in Jesus. Now somebody give Jesus a great big praise. Come on, give him a Christmas praise. I said give him a Christmas praise like you're glad he saved you. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. Every head bow and every eye closed.
you don't even know who you're sitting by. <laughs> oh, I said, you don't even know who you're sitting by. Because God's going to start unwrapping some things for you in 2017. There's some stuff getting ready to come out of you. There's some glory. Come on. After all the testing you've been through, it's time for the unwrapping of the glory. <laughs> Somebody shout, Jesus. And every man, every head bowed, every eye closed. been given the gift of life in Christ Jesus. The question this morning is, is that life wrapped? Do you feel the protection of God in your life? I have some good news, but I got to give you the bad news first. 2017 will be one of the most trying times in America, in the history of America. But the glory will be on the church like never before. Darkness will cover the line, land, but it shall not cover you. For the glory shall be seen upon you. You got to make sure your life is wrapped in God. You, you can't just come here this morning and say, Lord, thank you for another Christmas Sunday. Thank you for the baby Jesus. If you don't have that baby in you, if you don't have his kingship in you, kingdom of heaven is within you. This morning, we're going to be leaving in just a few moments. We're going to re re of course receive your gifts. But there is no more important moment in this service than you deciding whether or not Jesus is in your life. I'm telling you, you do not want to go into 2017 lost. Your soul is weighing in a balance now. Because it's going to get so dark. Now, I'm not a gloomy prophet. I'm a real good, but I need you to hear me this morning. It's going to get so dark that it's going to be hard for you to even figure out whether or not what you've been taught and told all your life is true. You know I want to talk about evangelists, don't you? Every head by I quote, if you're here this morning and you said, preacher, I just want to make sure my life is right with Jesus. I, I, listen, listen, I, I, I think I'm saved or, or I feel like I'm saved, but I just got to make sure my life is right with Jesus. I don't really have this joy. And if that, if that gift can be wrapped in me, if God wants to reveal some glory in me, then I'm ready. You have my life. You, listen, you know who I'm talking to. Your family's disarray. Your relationships are help the skelter. You don't even know what your career is. Your life is out of sync. But I'm here to give you the good news. If you come to Jesus this morning, if you say yes to Jesus, he'll wrap his life in you. And you won't have to worry about 2017 nor any other year because you'll be under the shadow of his if I'm talking to you now at the count of three, I want hands going on. If you don't have a church hope, maybe you're born again, but you're just kind of floating around, don't know what church you want to be settled in. I'm telling you, 2017 is not going to be a time to be church hopping. Settle. God has sent you the dream life, then get the dream life and settle that dream life. Because we got an amazing year coming up right here. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. If I'm talking to you, you said, preacher, I just want to get me right with God. Just bear with me, saints, because this is the most important time of the service. 
If I'm talking to you at the count of three, I want you to lift your hands high and say, Jesus, here I come. Here is my heart. One, two, three. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. 